Hello, I'm Connie Deal, Director of the Arts at Montgomery Academy. As the AP Studio Art Instructor, I led 17 students in their preparation for a portfolio to be submitted to the College Board for college credit this year. Students were charged with the task of creating a body of 15 works that had a sustained investigation. A sustained investigation challenges the student to work thematically while also documenting the creative process and showing growth in both skill and intellect from piece to piece. While this is a formidable process, it proved to be even more arduous as students worked from behind a mask to keep themselves and classmates safe. They were resilient in their efforts and it was so rewarding to see them complete impressive portfolios. You will hear each student read her or his artist statement as their work appears. It is beautiful and intriguing. I hope you enjoy the AP Studio Art Exhibition for 2021. How can I use abstract elements found in color field paintings to portray detailed subject matter of memories? In my sustained investigation, I juxtaposed abstracted surfaces by using drips, spray paint, charcoal mark making, stencils, and a combing paint technique against flattened figures and subject matter that informs the viewer of an event that has taken place. I began with locations where some of my greatest memories were made. These pieces show my love for travel, something I have missed greatly during the pandemic. Next, I transitioned into incorporating figures into these backgrounds. I wanted to capture lyrical movements shown through a sleeping dog or a dancer. I explored how mark making and stencils accentuated the shapes of the figures and gave them an energy. My next phase utilized groups of figures. I chose to make these groupings faceless to represent what feels like an acceleration of time as I approached the end of high school. At this point, I looked back at some of my earlier works and realized I wanted to clarify memories by making them more detailed, while also using a playful approach to pattern. How can I depict both the internal and external struggle for confidence through representative alterations of my model's faces? My interest in portraits is inspired by the hyper-realist Robert McCurdy. My art making has largely been about quantifying my identity and embracing it with confidence, a universal conflict that I have sought to express in my portfolio. My models reflect a variety of ages, emphasizing the continuation of the struggle throughout a lifetime. I used broken mirrors to fragment the model's faces to demonstrate an internal struggle for accepting oneself in full. I applied paint to my model's faces to represent the facade they put up to the world. This stage in the search for genuine self-expression is delicate because it is comfortable, as expressed in the portrait of two girls who seem satisfied despite concealing their truest selves. Ultimately though, fulfillment is achieved through honest representation of oneself, which I have shown in my final work, a portrait of my teacher, Floyd, who died of COVID. Though Floyd's life was cut short, he was always genuine, thus achieving self-actualization, no longer in need of fractured mirrors and paint. How does the way we think influence the way we perceive books? Books are an essential part of life. We read them to gain knowledge or to escape from the rigid structure of everyday life. But how do each of us perceive the books we read? Throughout my portfolio, I approach books from different angles to bring my perception of the book to life. I use the pages of the books to keep the book incorporated. I also use the pages because the pages house the story. I read all of the books in this portfolio, then explored the way I felt in each moment and remembered the scenes that called the most attention to themselves. I then brought those scenes, the major rhetorical devices, and the symbols of each book to life. I experimented with different ways of breaking each book down to rebuild them. I burned pages, soaked them in water, bent the pages at odd angles, and even ripped them. I started with just breaking down the book and chaotically displaying them and eventually began to rebuild features of the books like the Basilisk Fang from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Throughout my portfolio, I developed a new appreciation for the thought each author puts into their books. How can I show that the many traditions and objects of Jewish life are universal as well as educate my peers on these religious symbols and stories? As a Jewish student in my community, I consider myself in the minority. While I have a very accepting peer group, I recognize that they did not know about my religious traditions. No matter where you are in your life or the world, 
Jewish people have stages, events, traditions, objects, and even places that connect them. All the works are mixed media, usually painting with different media added on top to emphasize what is special or meaningful for the event taking place or the object that relates. For example, I incorporated confetti for a bat mitzvah, rolled paper on the wailing wall, and encaustic to emulate a stained glass window. In some of the pieces, the people have no faces, so the viewer can relate and imagine themselves as a part of the work. I wanted to show how it doesn't matter who you are or what the object is, but that every family has traditions that are similar to those found in the Jewish community. Our class critiques often brought understanding and appreciation from my peers for my religious beliefs. How can I portray defining moments of a female that influence her from childhood to womanhood? Just as a child's memories are segmented, I use mixed media to segment faces and events. At first, I lacked confidence in portraying faces, so I added mark making and stencils to create connections. A woman's journey is defined by her experiences and how each memory guides her being. My pieces depict a moment in a girl's life. While they seem to be specific occasions, they relate to everyone. Some show the bond of sisters or a competitiveness for sports. Others signify the passage to Sweet 16. In white dresses, I use an analogous color harmony to create balance and focus on the satisfaction after graduation. Girl Sleeping has tulle and gold foil to illustrate fairy tale dreams of hope. In Tire Swing, stencils and decorative shapes exemplify the exhilarating bliss that comes from play. My work represents the intense love and family, pure thrill in childhood, complexity of relationships, and competitiveness gained in sports. These emotions associated with events are more influential to the life of a girl than just the exact memory. It is how she defines her life on the journey to womanhood. How can I capture the anxiety in the aftermath of a spill while incorporating my intrigue with making small clay objects and utilizing resin? In my sustained investigation, I began molding spills using clay such as a paint splatter or toothpaste. I then wanted to capture a more realistic spill that looked like liquid, such as a water spilling out of a fishbowl or iced tea spilling out of a glass. I colored the resin using paint and ink to mimic the liquid aspect of the spill. Rather than using actual everyday objects, I expressed my intrigue of clay sculpture to create the objects out of clay, fire them, and then break them to capture the event of the spill and the uneasiness brought on by the broken object. I then transitioned away from spills to liquids that ooze, such as a cake batter or a severed hand. I added flour to the resin to give it texture and create a thicker, oozier consistency. These spills and oozes captured the reality and anxiety of a spill or ooze while simultaneously picturing the aftermath. How can I minimize landscapes into basic shapes and emphasize focal points with lines? In most landscape paintings, the focal point is dependent on the location. Most detail gets lost in the colors and vibrancy of landscapes. Throughout my concentration, I focused on bringing the shapes and shadows hidden in the landscapes out instead of letting them get lost in the painting. I look to use the landscapes as a base then accentuate details with lines that are varied in thickness, weight, and color. I did multiple studies with palette knives, monochromatic pieces, and caustic and acrylic paint to explore this idea. The idea of going over the painting with lines was inspired by pieces hanging on my mood board that relate to the work of post-impressionists. While the period focuses on lines and shapes found in landscapes, I had the intention of finding hidden shadows and shapes in the landscape and accentuating them with lines that draw the viewer's eye. It made me appreciate the hidden beauty that is often lost in landscape paintings. Each person has a unique personality and what we get from each other's uniqueness. Throughout the series, I have explored different personalities of people who had a huge impact on my life. Each person has a different personality and strength, which are shown through their behavior, talking, and thinking. For example, I learned how to love and be loved from my mom and how to be creative from one of my English teachers. My goal was to elicit those values in comparison to flowers as if their strength were flowering. Just like each person has a unique personality, flowers have different meanings. By positioning the face as if it were a mask, I successfully illustrated the flower blooming within individuals. Then I added white pencil sketch lines that indicate those personality and individual uniqueness are continued to thrive and develop. Those lines also add some connection and consistency throughout the series. How did the pandemic affect what people would wear? 
how could I create magazine slicks that represent the issue? During the pandemic quarantine, I was inspired by fashion and both the freedom and constraints that it created while being at home. After deciding to have a magazine design focus, I quickly realized while in a pandemic, I didn't have the freedom to photograph garments for a fashion sustained investigation. The home became a central theme of my concentration and at home fashion became the focus of my design series. At home fashion or AHF can be found in every piece. I promoted how women could continue to stay fashionable while in the confines of their own home with a whimsical look at staying creative, wearing jewelry while watering plants, roller skates while vacuuming, and a designer coat to take out the trash are among a few ideas. This encapsulates the freedom of expression through the boundaries of a pandemic. How can I take timeless figures from Greek mythology and use members of my community to connect these characters to my life? I have always been fascinated by Greece and the moralizing tales of these myths have helped me through difficult points in my high school career. I was very thoughtful about which friend or family member would portray each god and goddess and did my best to mirror each personality. I also planned the composition so that they would all interact with each other as one combined, creating the connectedness that a family tree often has, as each member is tied to the next. For my concentration, I decided to paint the Greek gods because their stories have always captivated me, and it is because of these stories that I want to go into the classics. I also wanted to show their personalities and relationships in each piece, so each piece is similar and interacts with another, but the color schemes are drastically different. My goal for this concentration is to communicate my love for Greek mythology through my artwork and to show the ancient majesty of these stories while also connecting them to the present. How does the duality between spiritualism and materialism affect the perception of oneself? My sustained investigation is established on the growth and development of a person's mental health and physical appearance based on how they might be affected by the world around them. At the beginning of the portfolio, my focus was primarily centered around creating visual portrayals of the psyche. I began by creating faces with dual perspectives and contrapposed emotions. I moved away from this idea with the fourth piece by trying out a more narrative approach using shadow boxes and found objects. In the final pieces, I incorporated makeup into the drawings and shadow boxes as a symbol of materialism's effect on one's value or self-worth. Using the makeup, I was able to create a disquieting effect in the skin tones, adding a sense of irony as makeup would normally be used for beautification purposes. The use of found objects and the unusual commercialism allowed for more open interpretations regarding the organic symbolism hidden in each work. How can I portray the sublime beauty of horses while capturing the raw, fearful feelings of a large, dangerous, yet beautiful and intriguing animal through overlooked body parts and an unexpected perspective? As an equestrian, I've always had a fascination with horses and it has flowed into many prior works of art I've created. Before the sustained investigation, when I portrayed horses, I only utilized the full body and headshot compositions. But in this exploration, I found a new appeal for the complexity of the horse's anatomy that brought me to an understanding that there are parts of the horse that I have overlooked. And I now see with new eyes from the crooked qualities of a horse's spine to the tranquil gaze of the eyes. Using my horse as a model for zoomed in reference images, I made connections with my steed that every equestrian experiences. After using mark making in some of my compositions, I transitioned to illustrate only man-made objects in grayscale because I wanted to focus on the life of the horse being in color while the inanimate tack utilized for riding is monochromatic. How can one explore reflections to find an abstract perspective on their surroundings? In my concentration, I recreated photographs that I had taken of reflections that I saw in everyday life. I used acrylic paint to capture these images realistically. As I worked, I was intrigued by the distortion and brokenness in reflections. I sought to capture this perspective in an abstract way. Each image I first painted from a broader view to capture the complete beauty of objects and surroundings. Next, I focused on the reflections and how light interacts with the opacity of certain objects on a closer scale. I sought to capture the complex arrangement and irregularity of distorted reality in reflections. Quilts serve as a recollection of a person's achievements, beliefs, passions, and traditions. My images demonstrate the warmth and protection that I have received in my life, much like a quilt. At the beginning of my senior year, I decided to make my own quilt, 
to stitch together the past 17 years of my life. My childhood quilt explores the people, places, and experiences that have shaped my life and made me who I am today. I pasted materials such as paper, cheesecloth, and yarn onto a canvas to represent how I am piecing together my story before college. In my artwork, I deliberately tore and cut my materials to emphasize the importance of the interaction between shapes and lines, explored the elements of color and texture by layering tissue and scrap paper, worked on small and large scales to strengthen my precision with collage, and challenged my abilities by balancing the abstract with reality. The variety of materials became important to me as I tried to capture a different emotion or perspective. How can I look at the structural integrity of man-made buildings and industrial objects by using basic wooden pieces to craft structures often found in nature and landscapes, while focusing on their inevitable dilapidation? I focused on how I could create structures to which I end up destroying or make look old as well as useless. I think that my pieces represent the power of nature and how it can cause destruction in many things. I have used a common medium of wooden pieces, such as toothpicks, popsicle sticks, and die-cut triangular shapes to construct my work. I appreciated that I could incorporate repetition of pattern through wooden pieces that are the same size and shape, which I believe has helped me with my OCD. Over the last few years, I've realized that I'm easily bothered if things are not clean or tidy, which I've tried to express through my artwork. As I created each sculpture, I made sure that there were no unintentional flaws in the piece, which seems counterintuitive because nature creates unintentional flaws in man-made structures. I want the viewer to experience the precarious quality of structures that are not modified by natural phenomenon. Through my concentration, I wish to explore the beauty of the skeleton. I first began with a darker approach. My artwork was going to take you through the stages of coping with sadness. As I began to create, I realized that my nature skeletons are strong. They are the last part of the body to decay. Doing the skeleton in this way, I realized I do not have to take a dark approach with my artwork. I transitioned to adding color to the skeletons to capture the shadows and bends of the bones. At that point, I liked that the colors made me think of my grandmother's quilt making. That's when I decided to add stitching into my artwork. Beginning with no experience, I learned how to incorporate embroidery stitching styles and knots to add lines and texture. In my final piece, I abandoned the frame and worked solely with raw fabric as my canvas. I began to like the way the frayed edges added a sense of character to the piece. My last piece is the brain because the skeleton protects the brain to facilitate the creative processes that went behind creating these pieces. How can I explore the inner psyche of a person by segmenting photos of them? In my process, I was inspired by David Hockney's work in photo collage. I wanted to add a deeper element into this art form by exploring one's inner psyche. I explored the changing effects in one's natural beauty and facial expressions through multiple photos. I noticed that one's resting face shows a lot about not only how they are feeling, but their souls. I found a strange beauty in rearranging one's face and body into a mess of photos and finding the beauty in the obscure. I utilized a Polaroid camera to recreate a repetition of square patterns and facial features, along with using blank film to create a juxtaposed pattern on, of black and white. On several pieces, I painted the background with colors based on my model's eye color. I used this to show how the eyes are the window into the soul. I added string into my photos to add line quality and a two-dimensional element. I wanted to create a disquieting effect by collaging bulging eyes and oversized lips to capture multiple snapshots in a single image. With my art, I get a deeper understanding of one's psyche by rearranging the view of the sitter.